everyone and welcome to the live stream today we have something special that's going to be happening here something i'm excited about a little nervous about uh we'll see how it goes <laughs> i'm gonna be embarking upon this challenge to read every single new testament commandment in one sitting here live today and you know, I think um, I just saw someone say in the chat, wow, is there really so many? You know, I think people, they don't think about, wow, there's actually quite a lot of commandments in the New Testament. And today, I think we're going to be seeing this anew. I've certainly, my studies been, my eyes have been open to so many things, and I hope for you to see the same. Um, I want us to rediscover really the depths of what Yeshua Jesus brought us. Now, I'm going to be digging right in here in a moment. Before I do, I just want to put in front of me here for you all a few disclaimers. All right, so this, what I'm about to do is we're going to read through a list of the commandments, the laws in the New Testament. What I, this is going to be is not a replacement for the scriptures. This list is not an authority. It is here to edify you. It's there to drive you deeper back to the source, the place it came from, the scriptures itself. And because this list is going to be me reading a very uh, a list that is simple and concise for the sake of time, it means that a lot of the things I'm going to be mentioning here are going to be void of their original context. And so I'm going to try my best to fill in context as far as I can, as time allows. But you're going to have to, for greater understanding, go back to the reference, the scripture itself and read for greater understanding. And so for that reason, I am going to be including a document in the description of this video. It's not going to be there yet at the time of broadcast now, but I'm going to be putting it up there for you soon. So you can go back and look at where in the scriptures each of these commandments are for your own studies. All right. So I think that's it. Um, Let's just dive right in. Father, I pray that you, as we're about to open, as we're about to open this, Lord, Lord, I pray that you would just have your Holy Spirit move upon your people, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would come and guide us, open our minds to hear your word, your truth, and help us, Lord. I pray for open hearts, Lord, to, to be able to receive, Lord, your heart in the name of Yeshua. And Father, I pray that every word would fall on good soil and that your word, your truth would go forth right now on this broadcast. Lord, I thank you in the name of Yeshua. Amen. All right, guys, let's dive right in. So I'm going to start and what I've did, what I've done is I've categorized as far as I can um, the laws here. And so I'm going to just dig right in with things to abstain from. Right. We read that we ought to abstain from idols sexual immorality, strangled meats. God does care about what we eat. <laughs> abstain from eating blood. Abstain from meats offered to idols. All appearance of evil and abstain from fleshly lusts. He then goes and we then read a few things that we ought to ask. He says, ask and you will receive. Ask no return of goods. Ask God to give life to backsliders, to restore them back to the faith. Now, a few things to be, he says, be exceedingly glad. Be reconciled to a brother. Be perfect. Be wise as serpents. Be harmless as doves. Be ready for Christ's coming. Be content with your wages. Be merciful as God is merciful. Be like faithful servants. Be thankful at all times. Be at peace among selves. Be patient towards all people. Be no partaker of sin. Be sober and hopeful. Be sober and pray. Be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, charity and patience. 
speaking to aged men in the scripture in Titus 2 verse 2. Then says to the young women, be sober, love husbands and children. Be sober minded, speaking to young men and speaking to aged women, he says, be in behavior as becoming to saints. Then he also says to young women, be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, good and obedient. Then he goes and we read in 1 Peter 3, be ready to give an answer of the hope that is in you. Be of good cheer, be baptized, be repentant, be transformed, be kind of brotherly love one to another. Be fervent in spirit, patient in tribulation, be given to hospitality. Be afraid if you are lawless. Be no idolater. Be imitators of Paul as he imitated Christ. Be followers of God. Be followers of the faithful and patient. Be not children in understanding. Be men in understanding. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Be always abounding in God's work. Be strong in the Lord. Be of good comfort to others. Be of one mind. Be separate from the unclean. Be renewed in spirit. Be angry and sin not. Be tender hearted one to another. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be like minded. Be of one accord. Be anxious for nothing. Be an example to believers in word, conversation, charity, spirit, faith and purity. Okay. Be a partaker of Christ's sufferings. Be gentle to all people, be able to teach, be instant in season and out of season. Be careful to maintain good works, be content with what you have. Be doers of the word and not only hearers. Shema. Be afflicted and mourn, be patient till Christ comes. Be holy as the father is holy. Be tender hearted, be courteous, be examples of the flock of God, not lording over it. Be subject one to another, be clothed with humility, be sober, be vigilant, be mindful of prophecies and commandments, be diligent to be found in peace. Be diligent to be without spot, blemish and blameless. Be faithful to death. Be watchful, strengthening the self. Be zealous and repent. Be a temple of the Holy Spirit. We're not going to read things to not be. Be not like the hypocrites in their prayer. Be not like the heathen in praying. Be not as hypocrites in fasting. Be not called rabbi, rabbi. Be not called master. Be not called father. Of course, this is in reference to having um, exaltation and these labels. Be not afraid of man. Be not of doubtful mind. Be not many of you teachers. Be not afraid of suffering. Be not troubled. Be not ignorant of time with God, because for him one day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. Be not deceived. There are many who will not inherit the kingdom of God. And we need to be we need to understand what that is and who those are. Be not conformed to the world, 
Be not slothful in godly zeal. Be not wise in your own sight. Be not overcome by evil. Be not mere servants of men. Be not children in understanding. Be not deceived by evil companions. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be not entangled again with keeping the law in order to be saved by it. For we are saved by faith in Yeshua. Be not deceived. Man will reap what he sows. Be not partakers with sinners. Be not unwise about God's will. Be not drunk with wine. Be not weary in well-doing. Be not ashamed of God. Be not slothful. Be not forgetful of strangers. Be not carried about with different strange doctrines or not the doctrines of Christ. Things to beware of. We're commanded to beware of false prophets, to beware of people, to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, to beware of the leaven of Herod. This is in reference to hypocrisy. Uh, That's sin of hypocrisy. Beware of hypocrisy. Beware of covetousness. Beware of hypocrite scribes. Beware of lest you despise God and perish. Beware of dogs. This is in reference to false teachers. Beware of evil workers. Beware of those who teach salvation by the work of circumcision. Beware of vain philosophy. Beware of vain deceit. Beware of backsliding. What are we to believe? We're commanded to believe on Yeshua, that he is the one true way to the Father, that he is the Messiah, that he is the door. We are to believe the gospel. We are to believe in God's existence. We are to believe that God rewards those who diligently seek him. Okay. Um, Just make sure I get. Okay. What we are to not believe. Okay. Believe not every spirit. Those who curse you and use you, bless them and bless your persecutors. But cast out the beam out of your own eye. Cast out devils. Cast all your cares upon God. And then those who you are to comfort, comfort one another, fellow believers. Comfort the feeble minded. Comfort those who are mourning. Those who you ought to honor, honor your fathers, honor your mothers, other honor others and all people, honor widows indeed, honor kings and rulers. Things to ch- things that are, we are charged to be. Men are charged to be blameless. The rich to be humble, the rich to trust in God, the rich to do good works, the rich to lay hold on eternal life. Things that we are commanded to consider that even the ravens are cared for by God, how much more will he care for us? That even the lilies are cared for by God, how much more will he care for us? We are to consider the truth always. We are to consider that we are capable of failing and that we need to make sure that we do not fall. We are to consider Christ always. Things that we ought to continue in. We ought always to continue in love in everything we do, 
in prayer continuously and in truth. The things that we ought to desire, the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit. We also ought to desire to prophesy, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Something that we ought not to cast away is our confidence in God. We're commanded to not cast away our confidence in him. We're commanded to endure hardness and sufferings. Because in it, there is great reward as we mature in our faith. Who are we to fear? We're commanded to fear only one. That is the father. There are things that we are commanded not to fear. We're commanded not to fear man, not to fear persecutors, not to fear a lack of provision, what we will eat or what we will do tomorrow. We are not to fear tomorrow itself. Things that we ought to feed, we ought to feed our enemies. We ought to feed lamb and sheep in reference to God's people and people who, um, who, who we are shepherding. The flock of God, the church, the ecclesia, the assembly, we ought to feed. Things that we ought to flee from, we are commanded to flee from fornication. We're commanded to flee from idolatry and harmful lusts and youthful lusts. We're commanded to do the following. Do good to them that hate you. We're commanded to do to others what you expect of them to do to you. We are commanded to do violence to no one. We are commanded to do good always. To do this, put to God first and live. To do everything to the glory of God. To do everything without murmuring, complaining, disputing. To do these things which are seen and heard in me as Paul writes to imitate him, to do your own business, to mind your own business. Yeshua said we ought to do the Passover in remembrance of him. We are commanded to do the work of an evangelist. We are commanded to do a, there are things that we're commanded to not do. Do not righteousness before people in order to be praised by them. Do not sound the trumpet before you when giving alms. Do not imitate hypocrisy. Do not love in word only. Love in deed. Do not give heed to fables. Do not give heed to genealogies that bring up empty disputes. Do not be deceived. Do not commit adultery. Do not commit adultery in the heart, as Yeshua said, which is lusting after uh, someone else in your heart. Do not murder, but also do not have an unrighteous anger with your brother, which brings you liable to judgment. Do not call your brother a fool, which brings you liable to hellfire. Do not offer sacrifices to God while a brother has something against you that has been unresolved. Go to your brother and resolve it. Then bring your offering to the father. Matthew 5, 23. Very important. Do not fashion yourself according to the former lusts. You are supposed to look differently than what you did in your past. Now that you are a believer. Do not call any man unclean because of their diet, their nationality, their race, or any such opinion of man. Things that we are commanded to follow. We are commanded to follow Christ, to follow in love, 
to follow good, righteousness, godliness, faith, patience, meekness, peace, and holiness. Now regarding giving, we are commanded to give. Luke 6, 38, God wants us to give. He tells us to give to him that asks, to give to needy saints, to give to God, to make an offering to him. We are commanded not to give our pearls to swine. We are commanded not to give to dogs what is holy. We are to give no place to Satan in our lives. What are we to give? We are to give without pay. In other words, we are to give without expecting something back in return. And not only that, we are to give without pay the casting out of demons, the healing of the sick, the raising of the dead and the cleansing of lepers, as Yeshua commanded us in Matthew 7 and Matthew 10. We are to give thanks. We are to give time to the reading, exhortation and the doctrines of God. We are commanded to give ourselves holy, to give glory to God. But we're commanded not to give a gift that is reluctant. We ought to give cheerfully. We are not to give offense. We ought not to give heed of fables and commandments of men that oppose the truth of Scripture. We ought to give freely with good measure as God has prospered us willingly with purpose, not just how with purpose we want to give cheerfully. We want to sow bountifully to reap bountifully. We ought to lay aside a few things. Wickedness. We are to lay aside all malice, to lay aside all guile, hypocrisies, envies and evil speakings. We ought to keep and teach the Torah and the prophets. Matthew 5, verse 19 is what Jesus said from his own mouth. We ought to keep, to do and teach the Torah and the prophets. We ought to keep the commandments of Yeshua. John 14, 15, 1 Timothy 6, verse 14. We ought to keep no company with the sexually immoral, greedy, idolater, reviler, drunkard or swindler who identify as believers. When someone is a brother, in other words, they are a believer, but they commit these sins, we ought not to have company with them until they repent. Keep yourself pure. Keep the good entrusted to you. Keep yourself from idols and keep yourself in God's love. Things that he tells us to go and do. He says, go two miles if one mile is forced upon you. Go make disciples, baptize, teach everything commanded by Yeshua. Go preach. Go not from house to house, which simply means spend time and pour into someone or a house and don't spread yourself too thin. That's what making a disciple is. It's, it's a commitment. It's a relationship. It's deeper than just scattering seed everywhere, which is good in of itself. But there's a deeper level of discipleship he calls us to. He says, go and be merciful. Things that he commands us to have, have faith, have no fellowship with darkness, have no respect of persons, have honest conversation, have compassion, have a good conscience, have fervent love. Things to hold, 
Hold forth the word of life. Hold fast to what is good. Do not let go of what is good. Hold faith. Hold a good conscience. Hold fast sound doctrine. Hold fast till Christ comes. Hold fast the righteousness you have. Hold your crown. Hold reputation of ministers. Guard the reputation of ministers. Not compromising the truth, of course. Hold eternal life. Hold hope within you. Hold the confidence that you have in Christ. Hold what is heard and received from Christ. Things to let. Let your light shine. Let your speech be yes or no, not wavering. Let your enemy have your cloak. Let blind leaders alone. Matthew 15, 14. Let everyone deny themselves, pick up their cross. Let him with ears hear. Let him share with the needy. Let your loins be girded. Let your love be genuine, not fake, not pretentious, but real. Let everyone obey the civil laws of the land. Of course, as long as it does not come in opposition to the laws of God. Let everyone choose his own fasting day. Let everyone take heed how he builds upon Christ. Let no man deceive himself. Because it's possible to actually deceive yourself, is it not? To lie to yourself even. That's something we should all be careful of. To avoid fornication, let the man have his own wife. To avoid fornication, let the woman have her own husband. Let spouses satisfy each other in sexual relations. Let them who cannot restrain marry. Let husbands and wives remain unmarried if they separate or let them be reconciled. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 11. Let the unbelieving spouse depart who if they refuse to remain. Let every man abide in his calling. Let no one seek to erase circumcision. 1 Corinthians 7, 18. Let no one be circumcised in the way of being a conversion to becoming a Jew. 1 Corinthians 7, 18. Let a father give his daughter in marriage if she desires it. Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. Let no man seek wealth selfishly. Let everyone examine himself when partaking in the Lord's Supper. Let the hungry eat at home, not at the Lord's Supper, because then they will not be examining themselves. They will just be eating. Let the speaker who speaks in tongues pray that he may interpret. Let all things be done to edify. Let no more than three speak in tongues in one service and let there be one speaking at a time. Let there be an interpreter of tongues when speaking in tongues is occurring in the assembly. Let the mind of Christ be in you. Let your reasonableness be known. Let your requests be known to God. Let no one judge you with regard to meat, drink, holy days, new moons and Sabbath, Sabbath days when they desire to lead you to vain worldly ordinances of men. Colossians 2.16 and Colossians 2.22 Let no one rob you of your reward by some vain religion. Let peace rule in your heart. Let the word dwell in you. Let speech be with grace. 
Let no one deceive you about the day of Christ being at hand. Let no one dis- and just on that one, let no one deceive you about the day of Christ being at hand. There are certain signs that we ought to look out for that is lined out for us all in 2 Thessalonians 2. Let no man despise youth. Let the speaker in tongues keep silent in the church, speaking to himself and to God, if no interpreter is present. Let the prophets speak two or three and let the others judge. Let other prophets be silent while prophetic revelation is shared so it can be heard orderly. Let everyone acknowledge regulations regarding spiritual gifts are to be commandments of God. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 37. Let all things be done in decent order. Let everyone give as God prospers. Let all things be done in love. Let everyone give cheerfully. Let, let rebels be let rebels to truth be accursed. Let everyone prove their own work. Let those taught support the teacher. Let the thief steal no more. Let the thief labor instead of stealing to have something to give to others. Let no corrupt conversation come from your mouth. Let bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking and malice be put away. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Let the wives be subject to their husbands. Let the husbands love their wives. Let the wives reverence their husbands. Let your behavior be becoming of the gospel. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Let let, let each esteem others as better than himself. Let worthy elders be doubly honored. Let servants honor masters and let masters respect servants. Let every Christian depart from iniquity or every believer. Everyone who calls himself a follower of Christ, let him depart from iniquity. Let brotherly love continue. Let conversation be without covetousness. Let patience work perfectly. Let one who lacks ask for wisdom. Let him ask in faith. Let the lowly brother who is exalted rejoice. And let the rich made low rejoice. Let no man state he is tempted by God, for God tempts no one. Let everyone be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Let the wise demonstrate wisdom and knowledge. Let the light-hearted sinners become remorseful. Let the afflicted pray. Let the merry sing psalms. Let the sick call elders. Let elders pray for the sick, anointing with oil. Let adorning be more inward than outward. Let everyone refrain their tongue from evil and lips from guile. Let everyone shun evil, do good, seek peace and pursue it. Let ministers speak the words of God. Let let no believer suffer as a murderer, thief, evildoer, or busybody. It's amazing how he lists busybody alongside busybody being a gossip alongside murderers, thieves, and evildoers. Let no one be ashamed to suffer as a Christian, but be thankful. 
let Christian sufferers commit their souls to God. Let eternal life abide in you. Let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Let him that has an ear hear the words of Yeshua. Things to let not. Let not your left hand know what the right hand does. Let not man sever those who are married. Let not what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. Let not sin reign in the body. Let not him that eats despise him that fasts. And let not him that fasts judge him that eats. Let not the sun go down on wrath. Let not fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, filthiness, foolish talking and jesting be mentioned among you as saints. All right, things to let us, he says, let us all walk honestly. Let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us follow things of peace. Let us follow things that edify. Let us please our neighbor for good. Let us be sincere always in everything that we do towards every person. Let us not commit fornication. Let us not tempt Christ. Let us not murmur. Let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness in our body and spirit. Let us perfect holiness. Let us walk in the Holy Spirit. Let us not desire vain glory. Let us not provoke one another. Let us not envy one another. Be jealous of one another. Let us not be wary in well doing. Let us do good to all people. Let us do good, especially to new believers. Excuse me, to fellow believers. Let us who are mature press forward toward the mark. Let us walk by the same rule in unity. I think it's interesting that, that we ought to, who are mature, we are commanded to press forward towards the mark. To not grow weary, because I think that's something that can often happen as we grow in maturity, is it not? Let us not sleep spiritually. Let us watch and be sober, be awake. Let us be content with the food and the raiment that we have. Let us fear losing our soul. Let us strive to enter the Sabbath rest. Hebrews 4.11 Let us hold fast our profession. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Let us go on to perfection. Hebrews 6, 1. Let us draw near to God. Let us provoke to love and good works. Let us not forsake assembling together in worship. Let us exhort one another. Let us Lay aside every weight, every burden. Let us lay aside besetting sin. Let us run the race with patience. Let us look to Yeshua as we do so. And let us serve God, accepting by serving with grace. Excuse me. Let us serve God acceptably by serving with grace. Let us bear Christ's reproach. Let us offer our sacrifice of praise to God continually. Let us love one another. Things that we ought to let us not do. We ought to not let 
uh, let us not walk in rioting. Let us not walk in drunkenness. Let us not walk in sensuality. Let us not walk in filthiness. Let us not walk in quarreling. Let us not walk in envying. Let us not judge one another in matters of opinion. Let us not cause others to stumble. Live peacefully. Live free from anxiety and free from distraction. Live no longer in the lusts of sin. We ought to love in this way. Love the Lord your God of all your heart, soul, mind, strength. Matthew 22, 37. And love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies. Those that hate you despitefully use you. What we are not to love, however, is the world, the things in the world. We ought to love in a love that is fervent with a pure heart that is genuine and as brethren. Love we ought to love. We ought to pray for the following our persecutors for laborers in the Great Commission in the harvest for one another. The ways that we ought not to pray are use not vain repetitions like the heathen. Do not pray as hypocrites. But pray after this manner. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we've forgiven those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For to you belong the power, the might, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Also pray in this way. Ask, seek, and knock in your prayer. Pray in the Spirit. Jude one twenty. We ought to prove ourselves. To prove what is acceptable to God. We ought to prove all things. We ought to prove accusations against elders and not just take them at face value without testing. We ought to rejoice and rejoice evermore. We ought to put away the following. We're commanded to put away wicked people from the congregation. We ought to put away lying and all bitterness. We ought to, to put away wrath. We ought to put away anger. We ought to put away clamor, evil speaking, and all malice. We ought to put off the old man. To put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, and filthy conversations from ourselves. We ought to put on Christ, the armor of light, the new man we ought to put on. We ought to put on the whole armor of God. We ought to put on the hearts of mercy. We ought to put on kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, love. To put on the breastplate of faith and love. Put on the hope of salvation. We ought to not rebuke one class, the older man, but instead encourage him. We ought to rebuke persistent sinners, rebels, and the works of darkness. We ought to rebuke in all authority and with all long suffering, being even patient, even in our rebuke, even with those who we do rebuke. We ought to rejoice in hope 
in blessings of others and how God is opening doors for others instead of being jealous. We ought to rejoice in the Lord, in what he has done for us, in the, the cross, in, the, in our sufferings when we suffer for Christ. We are called. We are called to remember. We're commanded to remember what we have been saved from. We have to remember from where we have fallen our past. And repent from those things. Revelation two, verse five. We ought to remember those who suffer. We ought to remember those who lead us. We ought to remember truth. We ought to seek the following. Seek God's kingdom first. Seek God in prayer. Seek to edify the assembly, the ecclesia, the body. Seek things above not things beneath on earth. Stand fast and hold to the traditions delivered by Christ. 2 Thessalonians 2.15 And we ought to stand fast with our loins girded about with the truth, with the breastplate of righteousness and feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We ought to stand fast in our faith, in our liberty, in one spirit, in one mind and in the Lord. And we ought to think on the following, to think soberly about our true self, not more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. We ought to think about things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report and of virtue. And we ought to take the following. We're commanded to take no anxious thought regarding the necessities of life because God will provide for us. We ought not to take an anxious thought for tomorrow. We ought to take no anxious thought of defense in court when we are persecuted for Christ's sake, when we are taken before others and we're persecuted for Christ's sake, like the disciples were, we don't have to worry about what we will say because the Holy Spirit will bring what we ought to say to our remembrance, to our mind. That's Matthew 10, 19. Take my yoke upon you. Take advantage of freedom. Oh, and by the way, when he's Yeshua speaking, he's saying, take my yoke upon you. What is that yoke? It's really all the things we're reading here today. He's saying, I am going to empower you with my Holy Spirit to take this burden that I have for you to follow what I am giving you to follow. But my spirit is going to empower you to do all of these things. Take my yoke upon you. It is easy. It is light. It is not a burden. It is not heavy. Is there a lot of things? Yeah, there's a lot to think about. And we grow maturity as we read them and as we study them and as we grow into Yeshua and Jesus into Jesus more and more. And it's not because we want to be saved by them, by our works, but it is because we've he saved us first. And now we are responding to that salvation and obedience and love for him. Amen. He says, take advantage of the freedom that he has died for us to have. Take the Lord's Supper in remembrance of Christ. That is the Passover and to drink of his uh, blood and to eat the bread that represents his body. Um, Take the shield of faith. Take the helmet of salvation. Take the sword of the spirit. Take oversight of the flock willingly. Take oversight of the flock without thought of personal gain. Take a humble seat. Things to take heed of. We're commanded to take heed not to despise little ones. Take heed not to be deceived. 
Take heed regarding what you hear. Take heed to walk in the light. Take heed to rebuke a sinning brother and forgive the repentant brother. Take heed not to get drunk. Take heed not to be overcome with the cares of this life. That is depression. Take heed to the flock of God. Take heed lest you misuse your liberty. Take heed lest you fall. Take heed to your ministry that God has given and called you to. Take heed that you destroy not one another. Take heed to your doctrine. Take heed to not backslide. And that one that we just read, take heed not that you destroy not one another. That is in reference to the things that you value. That is very much a thing of your own opinion um, or um, under having a revelation that you personally have about God, using that revelation and causing others to stumble. Okay, that is uh, expounded more on in Galatians 5, 15. Thou shalt, you shall worship God only, and you shall serve God only. And in things to walk in, we're commanded to walk in the spirit, to walk in love. We're commanded to walk in the light, in watchfulness, in Christ, in wisdom and in honesty. We are commanded to not tempt the Lord, to not murder, to not commit adultery. Do not pray to be seen, to not steal, to not bear false witness. We are commanded to not covet and thou shalt not muzzle an ox trading corn. That means that you will pay someone for their labors fairly. You will not let them labor for free. All right. We're going to go through a few miscellaneous commandments again, brothers, sisters. I just want to remind you that um, I'm not reading all the references just for the sake of time here today, but I will be attaching a document to the description of this video in a timely manner. And that will include what I'm reading as well as the references. All right. All right, let's go on. It's now uh, we're going to read some miscellaneous com commandments. Abhor what is evil and then the qualifications for an overseer. An overseer must be above reproach, husband of one wife, no polygamous, sober minded, self controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, have a gift of teaching, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own house well. We are commanded to abide in Christ, to abide with worthy ones, to accuse no one falsely, to pursue virtue, knowledge. Oh, and actually just on that one, accuse no one falsely. When we present evidence that we have not investigated to be true ourselves as the truth, and it turns out to be false. We are guilty of making a false accusation because we ought to have integrity in the truth and how we handle the truth. Pursue virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection and love. Admit your own unprofitableness. Because you must boast in God and his power in you. Admonish one another. Admonish the unruly. When you are in debt to someone, come to terms with your legal adversary on the way to court. Allow no liberty to ensnare you to commit sin. Don't use the quote unquote freedoms you have in Christ as an excuse for sin. Allow no cursing and blessing from the same mouth because a tree cannot 
is a, either a, a tree of one kind of fruit and you have to bear that kind of fruit. Salt and fresh water doesn't come from the same spring. You are one or the other. Anoint your head and wash your face when fasting. Arm yourself with a mind to suffer for Christ. That's a good one. We should live in a way, even if we're not suffering for Christ now, that we should arm ourselves with a mind so that when suffering comes, we will be able to endure it. Avenge not yourself. Why? Because God is the judge and he will avenge. Awake from death to light, bear one another's burdens. Bid no false teacher Godspeed. Bear fruit for of your repentance. You can't just say I've repented, I've repented, but your works don't change. There has to be a change in your works. Bring your children up in the Lord. Amen. Build up your faith. Don't just let it be, but build upon it. Grow, mature. Call the poor to your feast, to your wedding. Children, obey your parents. Cleanse the lepers. That's a commandment. How do we do that? By the power of the Holy Spirit, by not trusting in your own flesh and yourself and what man can do and what you can do, but surrendering to God and letting his spirit flow through you. That's how you accomplish the impossible become possible, because with God, all things are possible. That's why he even commands us to do the impossible, because that is a thing of faith. So go and cleanse the lepers. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Cleave to good. Collect just dues only. Come out from among them. Oh, collect just dues only. That's interesting. That's be fair in what you charge and what is owed to you. Do not overcharge. Do not ask for more than what is owed to you. In this economy of today, that is something that definitely we should consider. Come out from among them. Command and teach these things. That we ought to uh, and, and these things are listed in 1 Timothy 4, 11. Uh, commit the truth to faithful teachers. Confess your faults to one another. Count a joy when you are tempted. Cut off offending members. Deacon deacons must be dignified. OK, qualifications for a deacon. Digni deacons must be dignified, not double tongued, not addicted, not greedy for gain. They must hold the faith with a clear conscience. Test them first, sir. Let them serve as deacons. And if they prove themselves blameless, appoint them. Their wives must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober minded, faithful in all things. Defraud not. Desire the milk of the word, but then also desire the meat. Despise not prophecy. Draw near to God. Eat your own bread in quietness. In other words, work for your own uh, bread. Earnestly contend for faith. I'm going to get there, brothers and sisters. I'm working through it and I'm going to make it. <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, awesome. Earnestly contend for faith. Edify yourselves with singing. Enter the narrow gate and do not be on the wide path that leads to destruction. In other words, don't follow the ways of the world. Do not just assume what the world teaches is true. Examine yourself as to faith. Introspection must, must happen. 
especially at the feast, like Paul said, um, like at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Paul wrote, writes, when we keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, make sure that you keep it with an unleavened, with, un, with, with no leaven. In other words, you examine yourself. So yes, there's where, where we are commanded to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread as well. Edify yourselves with singing. Enter the straight gate. Examine yourself as to... Oh, excuse me. I've been, I already read that. Exercise godliness. Exhort servants to obey. Exhort one another daily. Fear not. Fight the good fight of faith. Follow peace and holiness. Forbear one another. Forbid not children to come to God. Let the children come to me. As Yeshua said. Forbid not tongues, forbid not to share. Forgive seventy times seven. Fret not in servitude. Gird up loins of the mind. Do not avenge yourself, as we've said. Give place to the wrath of God. Give your enemy a drink of water. Give no occasion to the adversary, Satan. Give glory in your body and spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Grow in knowledge. Grudge not against another. Do not harden your hearts. Have no respect of persons. In other words, do not be partial in how you treat and how you treat other um, people because of riches that they have, wealth they have, or whatever else they can add to you. But treat all people the same. Have the same love. Heal the sick. Yes, we are commanded to heal the sick. Matthew 10, 8. Amen. Again, how do we do that? By the power of the Holy Spirit. How propagate and support the truth. Give to ministries that... that, that that proclaim the truth. Become someone who proclaims the truth yourself in your ministry. Stand up for truth in this world, whether in politics or in, in your workplace or in your school, wherever. Help propagate the truth. Humble yourselves. Husbands, be not bitter against your wives. Instruct rebels in meekness. Just because they're a rebel doesn't mean you have the right to treat them as the world would treat a rebel. Judge without hypocrisy, carefully and righteously. Know how to control your body. Lay not up for yourself treasures on earth. Lay up your treasures in heaven. Lay a hold on eternal life. Men, leave your parents and cleave to your wife. In other words, leave the household of your parents. You you continue taking care of them, not leaving them in, in some other way. Leave the household of your parents and cleave to your wife. Be independent is really what the scripture is telling men to do here. This is what God has put in the hearts of men. Lend expecting nothing back. Lie not, Colossians 3, 9. Lift up hands that hang down. Look out for the interests of others and not only your own. Look diligently not to fall from grace or use grace that sin may abound. Look diligently, lest any root of bitterness defile you. Before God, in other words, God has said, Yeshua has said, if you do not forgive your brother, um, he, God will not forgive you. That bitterness that you have in your heart will defile you before the Father, and He cannot forgive you. Look to yourself, not to lose your reward. Look, f- and, and you know this is interesting. It's we see this over and over and over. Make sure, hold fast to salvation. Do not lose your reward. We see that we can. We see we can grow weary. We can uh, lose focus. We can take our eyes off Yeshua. 
We aren't once saved, always saved because we just prayed a prayer. We must continue in righteousness. We must continue in imitating and in growing in closer resemblance to our bridegroom. Look for mercy unto eternal life. Lust not after evil things. Make no provision for lusts. See, there's a difference. You not don't lust after evil things, but also don't make provision for lust. Don't create environments where you can fall into lust. Do away with things that can possibly cause you to lust. And if that's your, if that's doing something to get rid of the pornography material in your house, like cutting that off so you don't fall back into that, getting rid of whatever material, getting putting protections around you, safeguards on your computer or phone. You know, that's that's an example we can use here to understand what he's saying. Make a tree good or corrupt. In other words, be good, be corrupt, but don't be a hypocrite. Don't say I'm good, but actually be corrupt. To be what you say you are. Make full proof of your ministry. Mark those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to Christ's doctrine. Identify people like that so that you can be aware of them. Mark the unruly. Marvel not if you are hated by the world. Masters, be good to servants. Do not neglect your spiritual gifts. That's a commandment, brothers and sisters. I think we've command we've neglected the commandment to neglect our spiritual, to not neglect our spiritual gifts. <laughs> Do um associate with the lowly minister as good stewards deny the flesh its desires contrary to God no man is to defraud his brother obey your leaders offer the other cheek turn the other cheek ordain no one in a hurry do not be quick to lay hands that's what that passage is about don't ordain people in a hurry. Owe no one anything but love. Overcome evil with good. Pass the time in fear of God. In other words, when we when we live and pass as the time passes in our life, we need to live in fear of God in understanding that there is a judgment coming and that we will stand before him and that we will need to give an account for every idle word that we have spoken. Romans 13, 6, pay your taxes. Yes, the New Testament commands us to pay our taxes. Yeshua said it. Pay your taxes. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. Romans 13, 7 also says pay just dues. Present your body to God as a living sacrifice. Give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of others. Provoke not your children to wrath. Purge out the old leaven, the sin. Purify your heart of doubt by drawing near to God. Quench not the Holy Spirit. Raise the dead. Yes, we are commanded to raise the dead. We are commanded to receive also those who are weak in faith. Receive one another. Receive the word with meekness. Reckon yourself as dead to sin, not alive to it. Reckon yourself as alive to God. Redeem the time. Reject heretics. Do not enroll young widows, rather let them marry so they do not fall into sin. Resist the devil and he will flee. Restore a backslider in gentleness, watching on yourself, lest you be tempted by the same transgression that overtook him. Run to obtain Christ. Honor God as holy in your heart. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. 
sell your possessions to help the needy. Settle lawsuits among believers outside of the world's courts. Because he says, will you not all become judges, right? So are you not? Why are you not able to settle these matters among yourself? Why do you profane uh, the Lord, the, the world's view of believers by suing its suing its, uh, each other in court? Set your affections above. Shake off the dust of your feet when reject when you're rejected for proclaiming the gospel. Who guys, we're almost there. We're almost at the end. Show charity to other ministers. Show yourself as a model of good works for others. Sing with grace in heart. Speak and do things in view of the coming judgment day. I think we've mentioned this before. Speak truth always. Speak sound doctrine. Speak no evil of your brethren. Strengthen your feeble knees. Strive together for the gospel faith. Live quietly. Study. Be diligent to show yourself approved so that you have a reason for the hope that is within you when they ask. See that no one renders evil for evil, but respond evil with good. Overcome evil with good. Swear not. Have faith to be baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit. Tell, yeah, and that's a good big one. Have faith to be baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's something that we really need to pray for. You know, when we see Paul coming to these men, right, in the book of Acts, and they're like, we have not even heard about the Holy Spirit. But then when Paul proclaimed to them that there is a Holy Spirit that was poured out, they put their faith in the fact that they can receive him too. And that's when they started speaking in tongues and prophesying. Tell your brother his fault alone first. Then bring witnesses. And involve the assembly only after witnesses were rejected. Understand the will of God. And if you do not understand it, go seek understanding and God will freely give it. Have hospitality without grudging. Watch and pray that you fall not into temptation. This is what Peter had to do just Uh, before Yeshua, Jesus was crucified and then he did not. He fell asleep. And so when he was tempted, he failed the temptation and he denied Christ three times. So watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. Work with your own hands. Work or do not eat. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yield not your members to sin. Yield yourself to God and yield your members to righteousness. And last, but certainly not least, worship God in spirit and in truth. You see, brothers and sisters, I think that this is the cornerstone of really a lot of what we're talking about here today in this video. Yeshua said there's going to come a time when we will worship him, not on this mountain or that mountain, not in the ways of the past, but a new type of worship will come. A worship of spirit and truth. And she and see Yeshua came and he introduced many new instructions and they were all based upon the Torah. They're all in alignment with the heart of the Torah. And as you heard, as we've read, many of the commandments most of the commandments we've read are taken from the Torah and the heart of the Torah, also known as the Old Testament. Then there are some that are commandments regarding his Holy Spirit that had to be introduced as new regarding regulations on spiritual gifts, regarding the spiritual gifts themselves, regarding um, how to walk in the Holy Spirit, because these things could not have been given 
before because the Holy Spirit had not been poured out upon all mankind as we see post from post Acts chapter two. And so we do see that there were new instructions given regarding these regulations. And Yeshua said, I did not come to abolish. I came to fulfill the Torah and prophets. I came to to teach them, to give more meaning to them, to fill up the cup, if you will. This cup was half full with revelation and teaching. And he says, I'm coming to give you more commandments. Uh, uh, Let me say more revelation on those commandments to fill them up. And then he says, for example, how he does this. He says, you have heard it say, do not commit adultery. I tell you, if you ever look at a woman of lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. Now, that principle is not the heart of Torah, but he came and brought it as a great revelation and said it in a way that we did not have before. He, he gave it in a way in, of practice, uh, a practical way that we did not have before. And that is really why. There are the new the commandments within our New Testament are so precious and important because they all point to Yeshua. So I would like for you to really tell me in the comments, what did you think about listening to all of these? Was there something that I read that stood out to you that you haven't considered before? Uh, is there something that um, that that really meant a lot to you that convicted you? That I mean, there certainly are uh, words here, I think, for every single one of us. Um, and like I said, brothers and sisters, I'm going to be putting, I'm sure I know there's going to be many of you looking for references. PD, where'd you get all this? Uh, I'm going to be putting it all in a document for you. Uh, and uh, We're busy with that right now and we'll be publishing it soon. All right. So, guys, thank you so much for joining me here today. Hey, share this video. I just spent an hour and 18 minutes reading through Hopefully, I was trying at least to find every commandment I could. I may have missed one or two, but I tried my best. Uh, share, share this with people and let them hear the truth of our Messiah. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. May God bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. May he give you shalom, his grace and his mercy. I want to say a special thank you to our partners who have made this video possible and every other video this month. Many, many blessings and shalom.